Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and we're on week 17! Yay! Um, okay, a couple of things for a start. I've been on YouTube and I've been answering as many comments as I can, because you obviously know I'm filming ahead currently, so therefore I'm going to say hi and hugs and hellos to absolutely everyone who's out there, and welcome to all the new subscribers, and there are new subscribers, and thank you so much for the faith in joining my creative journey. I've also had a comment as well saying, how do I keep track of where my planner is on my screen? Um, what I've discovered is, well, before I start filming, I always do like a few seconds just to make sure I do a little test film to make sure what's in screen. And I do a little test so you can actually hear my voice. And what I've discovered is when I look at my mat here, now, when I'm looking through my iPad, I can only see up to here. However, when I film, I can see up to about here. So I know that if I put the corner of my planner in line with the corner of that square, you guys can see it even though I can't when I'm looking through this view. So there you go. That's just just because I know someone wanted to know how I kept things in view. I know uh, Gail Agostinelli, um, she does a similar thing and she has little washi tape pieces so she knows where she's in as, inside as well. Um, and there's lots of different tricks to doing it, but I think those are the most fundamental and easy way to do it. So let's have, stop gassing and get on with this. Are we up to right? We're up to week 17. So the the prompts for this week are: Is it going to focus? It is. Um, squares, text or a quote, a postal item, a pen or pencil drawn, photographed or stamped. That one caused me a bit of angst. Um, something that represents summer and a dictionary page. Okay, I have fallen foul to my own rules and regulations. As you know, I don't normally look ahead because I want to be surprised when I come to prep for this filming. That's when I first read the prompts. If I'd have known this week would have said something that represents summer, guess what? I wouldn't have done summer there. So as you can see, it's a bit obvious. So, I didn't know, but that's fine, because I'm going to take this in a slightly different direction. Um, instead of something that is so literally summer, I'm thinking of doing more like an ocean or a sea or a beach or a coastal theme. That's that's probably a better way to describe it. So let's push this up to one side. So therefore, I know you've got, got it in sight. And we know that over here, I've got my scissors and tear rulers and smoothers and print sticks. Yes, I bought a spare because I ran out last time. And I'll always have some glue pages and glue books. So we know I've got all the equipment here. So let's have a look and see what I came up with for this spread. So the first was squares. I thought, right, the obvious would be go for graph paper, so I didn't go for graph paper. I went to my washi supply, and all of these are squares. I mean, those are quite literally squares, and this is a grid made up of squares, so we're using those at some point in this collage. There you go. Um, text or a quote. Okay, I had a couple of options for this. Um, I found this quote here. Um, all worlds a stage, trust not the man that swears he's more than actor for that lie for that lie. Wave waves like the devil's banner over murder, th theft, raping, etc. You'd see I can't read without practicing it, can't you? Anyway, so there's a little bit of a quote there, and the reason I sort of reached for this is it got it's got the word waves in it, and I thought nautical, coastal, blah blah blah. Also, I have these now. Many years ago, I came across a, like a housekeeping book and at the top of each of the sections within that book, they had like commonal English quotes and things like red sky at night, shepherd's delight, um, don't open the door while the cake is cooking, um, moths come only at night. And I very periodically drop into these. So I thought we can, when it comes time, we can have a little look through this one and see which one might actually tie in with what we're doing. I'm not sure what one it'll be, but it could be one of those and it could be one of those. So, and I always clip them together because I have all of my um, stuff I use for collage in different boxes. And yes, guys, the video is going to be refilmed today of me harvesting um, the magazine articles. As I said, I'd already filmed it for something, something went really wrong with YouTube and I ended up losing the entire video. Well, I do have another couple of magazines and I'm going to refilm it today um, 
It's probably going to be out before this video because of course I'm scheduling so therefore know that yes it is being done for you. Right, um, a postal item. Postal item for me was absolutely obvious postage stamps and I went through and I pulled out postage stamps with sailing ships on them and seabirds. And I thought okay stay with the coastal theme. Pen, pencil drawn, photograph drawn or stamped. Mm, slightly difficult for me. I found a stamp that had a quill and an inkwell on it. So I guess that's that's qualified. I found a picture in a Reader's Digest of a man or a woman writing. And then I found these images and all of these people are writing as well. So these will probably just merge into the background, but we know they are there and I'm okay with that. What's next? Something that represents summer. Well, as you heard me say, I'm going for a coastal theme. So I had these in my stash and I've been wanting to use these. I don't, it just appeals to me. Um, definitely want to use a lighthouse at some point. I've got some seabirds as well. Um, I love this. I fussy cut this a long time ago and funnily enough, it's almost exactly the right size. So that'll be going in there. And I picked up a dolphin. There you go. Not literally. I just picked out a dolphin. There you go. Um, what was the last one? The last one was dictionary page. Well, the only dictionary I've got is my German English one and there's nothing wrong with that. So I'm going to use that as well. Then to top it all off, I thought, right, what other papers or things can I bring in that are within theme? So I had to dig through my little snippets boxes. Um, I like the colour of this. It was the it was a glass window. I liked it. Picked up a few words. That's um, a candle in a sea urchin shell. Um, found these little bits that look a little bit like waves to me. So they may come into play. Um, Found an image in a Reader's Digest of a guy playing a guitar on the beach. Um, you may remember this from before. Um, I think it was rafters and I've decided it could be planking. I found these pictures of um, glass windows. More, more glass, a little abstract. Found this in a magazine and absolutely loved this. And I don't mind using this. I'm not going to hoard it because I happen to know that it's... In the magazine I'm going to harvest this afternoon, so I know there's another copy of it, so it's there. I um, found this stained glass window picture, really loved that. What's stuck to the back of this? Oh, it's <laughs> there you go, packaging stuck to the back of this. Let's take that off. That, that shouldn't be in there. It's supposed to be in the box of things to use for collage. And then last but no means least, um, as most of you will know, let's take that out because that's probably really annoying that it's shiny. Um, I'm in an absolute love affair with, um, sorry about the crinkling, with Stamperia rice paper. I use it all of the time in Stamperia. If you ever watch one of my videos, I would love to promote your rice papers. Absolutely love to do it. So, there you go, Stamperia rice paper. I can't, has it got what this one's called? I don't know whether it says what it's called on here. Anyway, it was all fish and I think there was something other than fish there and I've used it already in some of my artwork. But I thought that might be just a fun element. So think coastal, think ocean, think sea, think beach, but without being sunbathing beach, if that all makes sense. Let's put that to one side. So that's, that's sort of where I'm pulling all my imagery from. Um, and as you heard me say, I'm filming another one today. And if I get um, another one, I'm doing the harvest today video. And if I get a chance, I will probably be trying to get another video done because I'm desperately trying to get ahead of things. So, right, let's put the blue book there. We're ready to go. Right, let's build a background. Um, for me, it's obvious I'm going to come straight in with the dictionary pages and tear off any space I don't really think requires being on here. And I'm just going to put this down. I'm just going to build a background, basically. So let's take, put the bits in the trash. It goes over there. And that bit's pretty much already torn. I can deal with that. Let's tear that bit in half. So um, I've been reading and going through lots and lots of comments. You'd be surprised how long comments take to go through, I must admit. But you know what? I'm loving it. I'm loving the fact that I actually get to talk to you. Well, text to you, should I say. Um, in my own inevitable fashion. Um, I'm quite happy about that. I think I think it's fun to be able to interact. Um, I try to keep my answers to not huge epilogues. Do you know what I mean? I try to make sure they're quite quite concise, one or two words. There are one or two of you 
that have actually answered and pretty much written War and Peace because what you've talked about I found really interesting and and it, it needed more explanation than a thank you or that's awesome or great, thank you very much, glad you enjoyed it, thanks for your advice, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'm, I'm really, really grateful that you're interacting with me, guys. I'm going to start sticking down, by the way, while I'm doing this. Um, and I'm learning stuff. Like there was one lady who commented and I didn't write down the name, did I? No, I didn't write down the name. Um, I believe the lady lives in Oxfordshire or Oxford or something. And on one of my videos, I actually commented that Edith Holden's granddaughter or daughter holds the copyright to all of Edith Holden's um, works. Apparently, according to this lady, Edith Holden never had any children. So I was wrong on that. But I do know there is a family member, I've been told, who holds the rights to... Um, all of her imagery and her books and stuff. So therefore, it's it's got to be a relative somehow connected. And I don't I don't know. And I'm not going to bury myself in that. Um, I could do a bit more research, I suppose. But to be honest with you, I only it was only a throwaway piece of information I gave out anyway. So I'm not overly worried. Um, it will get sorted out eventually. I'll, I'll come across a video and then I'll probably update you in the future and go, oh, this is how it was done. So, but needless to say, I enjoy using her imagery. Um, and I think the comment I made was about the books becoming more and more expensive and harder to find now, which is exactly what it is, to be honest. I don't think I've come across a copy of Edith Holden in quite a while. But then in saying that, I've been in lockdown for what seems like ever, so we can't even go out and shop currently. So unless you're buying food here in Wales, you're still you're still in lockdown. Although it's middle of this month, I believe we're actually allowed to escape from lockdown and the shops will start opening up again. Right. Background is sort of kind of there. Right. I'd like to use some of this and I'd like to use some of it. Let's tear it on the book, see if I can do this. So my arm is going to be so in the way of the camera, but you know what? I think we can cope, people. Take that bit out of there, because I really like that. Let's take that little bit off there, because I really love this piece of paper. It's such a cool idea. I might try and recreate this image, actually, for my own use for... Um, for a digital because it would be quite easy to go to a garden centre and buy river rocks and then colour them or paint them up and actually make make a layout like this and I think this would make a really really nice digital download so watch out for that I might do it in the future just just because I mean it's a brilliant idea. I can't give credit to the artist because it was an advertisement. So there is no artist to give give it to. I mean, and are they really going to care? Probably not. So, right. I like those two bits. I've got these bits left. I might stick that down that edge there. So I just tear that off a little bit. Um, you'll be pleased to know I don't have washing on the line. Isn't that a shock? Whoa, Kerry doesn't do washing today. So, yeah, it, it does make me smile when I, I listen back to my own my own stuff. And it seems like every week I'm doing laundry. Um, you must think, what the heck mess does that boy make? And I don't. We just, I don't know. I don't, I, how often does people do, do people do laundry? I mean, I don't have a massive wardrobe of clothes. So unless I do laundry, I don't. I don't have clothes to wear. <laughs> so so um, I've never been someone who buys copious amounts of clothing. Um, let's see, what else? It's just, I don't know. I mean, it's, how often do you wear the same piece of clothing? I mean, um, I don't need an answer to that in the comments, by the way. But I mean, if I wear a t-shirt, socks and underwear for a day, I change the t-shirt, socks and underwear the next day. Um, if I'm wearing a pair of joggers or a pair of jeans or something, I'll probably wash them when I feel they need washing, to be honest. It's not like um, it's not like the hygiene police around, are they? It's not like I'm breaking any unwritten rule. That's just the way I was brought up. You you wear something once, unless it's something thick and durable. Um, 
or something that's not in contact with your skin can actually be washed less frequently. Um, it's like, how often do you change your bedding? That's another question. I mean, I try to change my bedding once a week, um, purely because that's just the way we've done it in my family. I don't know whether people do it that frequently. I don't know whether people do it less than that. I know that when I, I stay in hotels or that, they'll very often change the bedding um, at the end of my visit. Or if I'm, I mean, I used to work on a cruise ship. Well, cruise ships, as you know, um, and they would change the laundry once every other week for crew members. So it depends on what I mean. I can't say that my bedding gets gets dirty or unhealthy. I mean, I I shower every morning. Um, if I've been in work, I also shower every night as well. So um, I'm a reasonably clean person. So, but I don't know. I just it's interesting to me. It's like, but. Um, in saying that, the winter throw I have over my bed probably only gets laundered at the end of winter um, because it's not in contact with anything. It's not in contact with me. Um, it's only a top layer of my bed, a bit like my collage. It's a top layer. So, so do, do you see where I'm going with this? I'm, I'm, never mind. Let's change subjects because Kerry's got lost in his own conversation. Right, so we've got some foundation basics down there. Um, what else do I want to put down as a foundation layer? I quite like adding some of these at this point, I think. Um, do I think pink will go there? Pink wouldn't be a natural colour choice for me. But I know that when it's pulled out and opened up, it's actually, yes, I think that's quite, that's quite summery. Let's just take that off there. And as Everybody knows, because I say it in every single video that I use, washi, I don't trust washi, I glue washi down. Mind you, this washi is just stuck to my book page. Thank you very much, washi. Um, and yes, I do know the habit of holding it on the top of a glue stick and running it through, but I find that it sort of cuts a groove into the top of my glue, glue stick, so I don't do that one very often. Right, now I'm not overly bothered that I'm just covering up the very edge of the text there on the prompts because to be honest with you I can still read through it and if I put anything over the top down there it's not going to be showing. Um, let's put a little bit across there. Um, that was something I meant to say because we, we sort of a few of us had conversations about hints and tips for collaging. Um, what was I doing? Was it yesterday? I don't know, because I'm filming ahead, I've got all these weird timelines in my brain. Um, I very often use pieces of washi to connect images. Like, for example, I've just put that piece of washi there, and that's immediately made that piece, that piece, and that piece one coherent piece. Um, it's just something I do naturally, and I, I do it, and I don't know whether it's something that's an artist trick and I must have learnt it somewhere or something but it's just it is something that I do and I, f I find that I will do it the same you've probably seen me do it with postage stamps and things like that that I will I will link imagery together with bits of washi tape and I do it with washi tape because the washi tape although it's not completely transparent it does have an element of transparency to it therefore it doesn't dominate what it goes over the top of. And I think that's enough of me rapiding on about that. Okay, what else do I need to bear in mind? Now, do I want to use... The trouble is, I like these images, but I don't see black and white on this page. So I think those are going to go into the parking lot. So, um, stamps are a top layer. I've got the dictionary down. Um, I do need to consider these pieces I pulled out at some point. Um, and actually I need to consider these pieces. I like this piece. Let's look at this piece next. Right. Note, I heard you shouting and I took the blue book away from myself. So let's take this down so it's got a little bit of a rough edge. Um, I thought this was a lovely idea, taking stones and actually painting onto them, but I do know that, I don't know what it's like in your part of the world, but um, 
we've got regulations in place to conserve nature here in Britain and you're not allowed to take things like seashells from the shore. A lot of shop people do it. Um, we're not supposed to take things like rocks from the shore or um, rocks from riverbeds and things like that because they are a natural habitat for something in there like a creature or sea life or something like that. So, um, and quite rightly, so if, if that's if that's something's habitat, how would you feel if someone came along and dug up your home and took it away from you? So, so yeah, we've got rules about that. It's like we're not supposed to take flowers or seeds or cuttings from things in nature. So if you say you're driving along and there's been poppies in flower, um, along the hedgerows and you've gone oh I'll just take some of those seeds from my own garden you're not supposed to um, I don't know who polices this stuff mind you um, it's like if you walk in one of our bluebell woods in the countryside and you go oh I'm just going to take some of those bluebells home with me um, you're actually not allowed to you're not supposed to if you get caught doing it I'm sure there's a fine involved I can't imagine there's a prison sentence unless you're commercially digging up half the field to get them. But um, so, yeah, so just know that that sort of stuff isn't overly legal in this country. So, but in saying that, if I really want to do something like that, I could go to my local garden centre and quite easily pick up a bag of river stones or river rocks, which I'm hoping have been sensibly sourced. I mean, I don't. I don't know how they make them or where, they, where they're allowed to gather them from that we're not allowed to gather them from. Um, but just, I would go to a garden centre and buy them or um, i go to a builder's yard and get stuff from there. So I, I wouldn't, wouldn't worry too much about it because, because why would I? I? I know I can source them equally as well. So anyway, end of that one. It's just an interesting bit of a topic. Um, there you go. So, um, weather-wise, it's, it's been lovely here in Wales. Um, we actually had people going to the beach the other day, which, which caused a bit of a ruckus because, of course, we're all supposed to still be in lockdown. We're supposed to still be social distancing. However, if you saw the pictures of some of our coastline over the past weekend... You would note there were people everywhere sat in cheek to jowl next to each other. Um, there's been a huge uproar because the amount of litter that was left behind. Because goodness knows people can't clean up after themselves. Um, yeah, it was slightly frustrating. I'm like, really people, you, you get one chance to go out and what do you do? You destroy the place. So, yeah. Right, let's stick. I like that in there. I think I might like that in there. Or do I like that over there? I think I want to tear this down ever so slightly. Bear with me a second. Um, so yes, it was slightly annoying that the first chance that the human beings have of going out into the nice weather, what do they do? They leave bags and bags of litter everywhere. They go and rub shoulders with each other, upping the contamination rate, which means we pro probably all have to go back into lockdown again in the future. And I'm so over that whole scenario. Just because you want to change the colour of your skin and get a little bit of a tan, you know, people, life is more important than a suntan. Seriously. And, I mean, the suntans may look healthy, but it's not doing you very much good in the long run. Although in saying that... Um, I'm currently, the doctor's got me on a vitamin D supplement because apparently I was vitamin D deficient, which could, it hasn't in my case, but could cause you to have um, a calcium deficiency if it became too much. And the doctor was explaining it's because basically I've just not been outside. I, I tend not to leave where I live, which it's a bit scary, really, isn't it? It's a bit scary. I'm liking that, but I don't want that just yet. Um, Okay, loving that, too big. So, um, which then puts in mind, I've got this little piece. I think I don't want that there either. Right. So making some decisions. Um, it's nice, but it looks a bit too ocean, ocean storm. 
Right, let's just, so I'm just eliminating stuff as we go by. I've not forgotten the prompts. I do know about the pen. I do know about the pencils. I do know about the stamps and the quote and stuff like that, but I'm building a foundation. So I think I quite like that one. And I quite like that one. Although if I put the rice paper fish on afterwards, that won't work. So let's put those in the parking lot as well. I do like Mr. Gannett. Mr. Gannett might go right by there. Um, I love Gannets. Um, their colouring is exquisite. They are so, so exotic. I'm always in awe of nature. Um, if, if I'd have actually been given better options when I was in school, like someone explained you could do things other than become a truck driver, a mechanic, or work at a shop, um, I probably would have done something like oceanography or archaeology or um, natural resources or something because nature absolutely fascinates me. I, I just, it's stunning. Absolutely love it. So, right. Um, this little bit down here off the beaten track, I think if I was to be very clever, he could go in there. And I think that might just be the piece I'd like to see stuck across the bottom of there. It's not a quote. Well, actually, is it a quote? Off the beaten track. It's, I think it's off the beaten track a saying. Yes, I think it's a saying. It's not a quote. Unless someone said it in the first place. And yes, I think someone has to say it for it to be a quote. So there you go. I think that's okay. I mean, there's, there's going to be a lot more layers. And there's definitely going to be a stamp or something there. So I'm not overly worried at that. Okay, so this is coming on long nicely. Um, anyone who sees me putting these to one side over there, I do have a box and in the box all the bits go and then eventually I use them for something else. So if you've been watching this series so far, you're probably like, Kerry, you've said it a thousand times and we're over it. Okay, back off people, I understand. Okay, other things in the bits of snippets of audio. I quite like this. I do quite like that, but knowing that I've got rubber, I've got, I've got stamps and quotes and things to go. I love it, but maybe not here. Um, I like this, but again, I'm not sure it belongs in this spread. Right, I loved these elements, and I think these do belong. Um, I know they're a little abstract, but I like pulling that colour down. I might put that one down there, actually, just before I procrastinate and convince myself I don't need to use it. I actually really like this piece. I love the colours in it, and, and it smacks of the ocean because it's got the points of the compass on it, and I love that. This piece, do I love it? I do love it. I, I'm not, I think it was a photograph of a glassmaker's bench. So this person must be into making a stained glass window and I really liked it, but I'm not sure how I want to use it. I think I'm going to save that. That can go in the parking lot. It may come out the parking lot in a few minutes, but I, there's just something about it. Now these little pieces, the paradise I think is going to go onto it. And the little indications of waves are going to be a top level with layer with stamps. Right, I've got my little friend here singing with his guitar and I think he fits quite nicely in there but I want something behind him before I do that. Actually I wonder, I haven't put my rope piece in yet. I quite like that over there. I'm just going to leave that lying there just, just so I can visually see about it. Hmm. I wonder. Let's see what else we've got. That sorry about my arm. Right. So I've got I've got the pen, pencil, whatever it is. I think that's going to go up in the top left hand corner because it's weird. I I tend to not put feature things in the top left hand college collage. Sorry, corner of my collage. So maybe that can just go up there, and that just means I've met that criteria. Um. Da da da. Right, I'm honing this down now to top layers, and now I'm thinking, do I want fish in here? And I kind of do, actually. I think that fish would be funny. So we'll put that in a minute. I'm still looking at this, not showing whether I should just put a bit of text in there, or whether I should try and just fill it up with something else. 
I'm wondering what's what's hanging around here that I can look for. Um, let's have a look through the basket. Okay, you know when I say parking lot, guys, this is the parking lot. This is where things that I've been using in previous collages go. Um, and then periodically I'll sort through it and if the stuff in here isn't working for me ever, it'll just go back into my scrap box. So, actually I'm doing that and the light's probably not letting you see what's in here. So you will recognise things in here. What's a bit of foreign text? I might take that out and see whether I do something with that. Um, oh look, I, I got had ter Terry chocolate orange so I made a window out of it. So I stuck packaging on there. So in the future, if there's if there's packaging in a future prompt, you're going to see that one come up. So let's see what goes in there. Mm, there's nothing much in there. Um, ooh, we've we've hit something. Oh, I can't get through it. Um, let's have a look and see if there's anything in. Oh look, there's the magazines I'm going to work on this afternoon. Those are the two magazines I chose to take pieces out of. See, it's all happening here, people. Um, right, if I've got something in here that might be usable for a background for ocean or something. Um, remember that? I stamped that for one of the prompts as well. Um, okay, a map isn't required, but a map might be an idea. Hmm, not sure. Actually, that might do. I think I want to... I put that in there. There you go. Decision made. Procrastination is over. So I think a bit of this, if I select the right bit of it, actually that's even nicer. I know it says Antarctic, but or should I do Pacific? See, I can't make up my mind, can I? Right, let's just tear this down so it's at least... Sorry about the tearing. I know it drives some of you crazy. Um, but you know what? It is what it is. I, I can't help when I need to tear, I need to tear. So let's take that bit off there. How much of this is actually going to be seen in the long run? Goodness knows. But I'm just looking for a piece. I might have to trim this down a little bit further. I'll bring that down to there. I want just a smidge off the edge of there. I think if that goes there, it's a bit dominant for me, but let's take a little bit off the side as well, so I'll make it smaller. But don't forget, I'm thinking about putting the image of that boy over the top. So if that's there, and where's he gone? And then that's over the top. That sort of kind of knocks it back a bit. Although looking at it, I'm thinking it's wrong. You know, all of that effort, and I didn't use it in the end anyway. Right, they can go back into the scrap box. Um, what do I want to do, guys? Do I actually want to put something... See, the trouble is I could put rice paper here, but it'll show through, I think. So I'm, I'm looking at this bit here and see... Actually, no, I could get away with that. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see if I can take this off here and see whether I can do something with this. Yeah, I don't know what it is about Stamperia rice paper that I love so much, except that I do love Stamperia rice paper. Um, the quality is brilliant. That's got a heck of a thread in there. Um, the quality is brilliant, and I love the imagery that they use. I mean, I don't know who actually creates their, their imagery, but I use it a lot. So let's put those two pieces back over here. Um, I think I don't want that to be at all. I'm wondering whether it needs to be a straight edge along there. If that goes... No, that straight edge is going to really annoy me. Um, yeah, um, I think Stamperia in the whole, to be honest, I like their imagery with their 12 by 12 pads and things like that as well. So, um, where is Stamperia based? I want to say it's... It's in Europe somewhere, I think. I can't remember. I've never actually looked into it, to be honest. I've just always had Stamperia, always used Stamperia. I think right by there is good, and I can deal with the rest of that around there. Right, because it's rice paper, not tissue paper, I can actually glue directly onto the back of it. Um, if this was, 
a napkin or something it would just tear at this point but the fact that it's rice paper and it's good quality rice paper I can use it straight away let's put that down and smooth that down okay I'm now liking that I know I need something there I still have the boy in mind but you know the boy may not actually end up on this anyway right I don't need the text the text can go back into the box um, I'm looking at this quote and I'm thinking that paper is too brown for this spread. So let's see if we can find something amongst this lot um, that calls to me. Right. Kiss and make up. No. Fish is good for the brain. That might be one. Ring around the sun. Breakfast. Apple. Keep hydrangeas. Don't scratch niche. Teeth. Never look at lift. A storm of bees, not a bee one. Red sky at night, possibly. Elephants, tack, run. Moths, polish. Well, you know what? I think it's one of those two. And I really think um, if I'm going to use the rice paper fish, rice, yeah, rice paper fish in here, fish is good for the brain might work. Right, let's put all of those back into the parking lot and they'll go back into my quotes and scraps box later on. So this obviously needs to be torn down slightly. Where have I put the tear ruler? Um, there you go. Um, let's see what else I'll talk about. So yes, as I said, lots of you are commenting. Love that. The only downside of everyone commenting is because I want to answer everyone's comments. It's taking more and more time per day to actually sit down and answer the comments. But I will get there. You may not get an answer immediately and you may not get an answer within a week but I'm systematically working through my YouTubes and I'm answering all comments. So I now admire what Gail Agostinelli does because she answers every single comment. And I also really, because she used to say every day she'd spend a couple of hours doing it. And I actually went, really, you don't need to do that, do you? Actually, you do. If you're, if you're running a YouTube channel and you want to answer, it's very time consuming. But what it is, is... It, it almost gives you a group of friends because, oh, I guess I need to change this shortly, um, because the same people will watch time and time again and you build up a kind of rapport with them, which is lovely. I love that. So, right, I think that's going to go over here. And I think if I put that there, it sort of gives the reason for the pen to be there or pencil. I know I've gone a little bit weird, but then he could be writing the quote. OK. Does that make sense to anyone except me? So, right. I haven't forgotten this rope piece. I do want the rope piece, but I'm not sure where yet. So let's stick the quote down. And I will do just a little quick check to see um, whether I'm getting all of the prompts in. So, right. Squares. Definitely got squares. Text. We've got text. Postal item. We've not got stamps. Um, a pen, a pencil, whatever, I've got that. Something represents some of the whole thing does for me in dictionary page, right? So I'm looking at this here and thinking this needs something on top of this. And I'm thinking I need to possibly bring in another bit of washi. I don't want to use this one again. I've got these washies. That's too dark. That's, I think, maybe the colourful one because this is becoming quite summery and colourful. And I'm kind of liking that. Let's, let's pull this one forward. Why can I not find... Oh, there it is. I'm thinking that'll just bring a little more... Yeah, and I quite like the fact that it turned out to be the pink ones at the top. Um, it's funny because one of um, my new subscribers is Noreen Mackay. And Noreen and I are really good friends. I've known Noreen for several years. She's a very talented crafter. Um, and we used to do TV shows for the same company. And it's funny because she was saying she was watching one of them. And I can't remember which, which of the spreads I was doing live and she watched. And she said, I put a piece of washi down. And in her mind, she went, Kerry, that's a mistake. And then about two seconds later, I took it off and went, mm, don't like that, take it away. And she went, oh, we're on the same page. And it's funny because that's sort of something I do when I watch other people's YouTubes is I try to qualify the reason 
why they've put something on the page. If, if that kind of makes sense. Um, to find out whether it's my thinking as well. Um, and I do it with a lot of them, like Tracy Fox, Gail, Amy, lots of them. And the thing is, they will put something down and, or they'll, they'll offer something up to the screen and I'll, I'll make a decision or try to make a decision before they've made a decision. Um, and I think that's part of learning that I really like because it, if they choose the same thing or give a reason I haven't thought about, it kind of qualifies why I made that decision. So I'm going to cut that bit off just just because it's going to bug me. Have I stuck that page down? Right, bear with me a minute. I just want to trim that bit off because it's got glue on it and I don't want to get stuck somewhere else. Or have I moved the orientation up? So, um, so yes, it's a game I play when I watch other people's YouTubes is I try to work out why they're doing what they're doing. Should I be doing the same? Have they made the same decision that I would make? Um, it's an interesting thing to do if you haven't done it. It's an interesting way to view stuff. Right. Um, I think it's time I considered the fish. And that doesn't mean by any means, shape or form that they're actually going to be in here. But actually I'm offering that up then. I quite like that there. Um, but I, I do like the idea of the fish. It's just it's just quirky enough to be in there. And I know I've got stamps to go. I think I'm going to fussy tear this one out. Um, as you just heard me say when I was fussy tearing this bit out, I went, oh, there's a really big thread. Um, you may wonder why I'm actually tearing these by hand and not using the tear ruler. Well, if we look at the back of this, you'll see all of these fibers in here. Now, rice paper is made from um, elements of rice that are inedible. I believe that's what I've been told anyway, which means that those fibers either cannot be digested or are not classed as edible in the first place. So they are darn tough, I can tell you. If you're trying to tear them on a tear ruler, it's really difficult to tear them. Um, which is why you saw me reach for a little pair of scissors just to snip that one. So there you go, a little bit of lesson on rice paper for you. So I would have used napkin as well, but I use napkin a lot. And the trouble with using napkin on something that, that's that got a time period to it, as in I'm filming. Um, if I'm using napkin, I would use probably use a collage medium. The one I usually use is by Tim Holtz. And it does take a little bit to dry before I can work on top of it. And although we enjoy the videos, guys, we don't need to sit around waiting for Kerry's mediums to dry. And I don't want to start having to edit these videos. I like the fact that I make them in real time from start to finish. I'll snip that off afterwards. In real time from start to finish. I like that. Now, I did play around with this over here. And I think I quite like that over there. So let's take that one out as well. Yeah. Um, it's funny, only when I'm processing these videos do I actually realise how long each of the videos take. Now, there was a time, as you may remember from the beginning ones, when I used to have a timer on the go. Um, and I stopped using the timer because basically it was only there as a guide for me. There is no time restraint for this. Oh, the sun's come out. Um, however, I'm managing to keep everything to about... 40, 45 minutes-ish. I mean, there will be ones that are slightly more than that. I know that, but, um, and that's fine. I don't mind that. I don't ever want to go over an hour on one of my videos. Um, although I am planning to do YouTube lives in the future. And I should imagine those are going to go over an hour because I'm, I will be interacting with you guys. I will be doing projects that will take longer than an hour. And the thing about YouTube live, uh, YouTube or a Facebook live is it's it's done live, but it's actually retained. So it means that um, it's never lost. The footage is kept. So it does mean that it can be watched later. You can watch it and then go back to it. So and I quite like that. I quite like those fish in there. They're, they're cute. Um, my gut is saying I need a third one. But, you know, my gut isn't always right. What I might need, however, is a little bit more of this somewhere on the page, just just to give me a little, 
Mind you, there are three pieces of it. I just quite like the thought of, there you go, decision made. I'm going to put that down there. It's stuck to my finger, so but there you go. So, um, so what's happening in the world? I don't actually know. Isn't that scary? Um, I don't read newspapers. I don't don't really watch television. Um, sadly, social media is probably the only time I see what's happening out there. Uh, but then I, you know, I know it sounds a little bit odd of me, but I'd probably watch the news if the news channels were actually doing stuff about positive stuff. I mean, everything is doom and gloom. I never see anything that's like, you know, Gladys down the road just won the lottery. She's got herself a new dog and she's living happily ever after. I mean, no, it's Gladys has been axe murdered down the street. All her lottery money has been stolen and she'll never be seen again. It's I'd, I'd like a little more happiness in the world, people. Is that too much to ask? Right, I've now put all of this on here. And I'm now thinking I can't get my rope on there. You know, that's good. He comes in at another time. He'll go back in the parking lot. Right. Still have postage stamps to do. Still have little bits and pieces. I still don't know whether I want this on the page. Actually, I quite like that there. That feels right. Let's put that down before I change my mind yet again. Um, I don't know who this person is. He's a figment of someone's imagination. It came out of a Reader's Digest book that I picked up for recycling so I have no idea even what the story was or the title. I've got a feeling it was called something like Dolphin something because I remember thinking oh I could use that for a dolphin thing and they never did. So right the word paradise may also be a bit of overkill on this page because there's already words on it. So let's put that straight in the parking lot before I try and add it again. So we're down to, excuse my arms as I reach under here, we're down to this collection. Now, I know these little elements are going to go on. Um, these other elements could go on. I'm not going to be putting the, the quill and ink pot. So let's see what I think fits. Right, I do like these and I keep looking at these pieces. And I'm thinking I just want... I want something. There's something I'd... I think when you do collage... You, you sort of get a gut feeling for when things are finished or things are not finished. Um, although if someone isn't listening to their gut feelings, you can end up with a heck of a mess because you just keep adding and adding and adding. Um, but you usually get an instinct of something is finished or not. And you often look at it and if you watch other people do it, you'll go, oh, that needs something or there's a bit missing or there's... Just stuff like that just seems to shout out to you that there's, there's a bit missing. Like There's obviously a postage stamp going here. That still needs dealing with. Actually, that might be dealing with that right over that little bit there. And then there'll be something over the top of it. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's knowing when to stop, which is, I must admit, a problem I have because I enjoy collage so much. I just keep going and going and going. Um, which is why I want to do bigger collage pieces in the future. Actually, it's a good point to talk about it. Okay, I was asked whether um, I would show work in my glue book. And as you might have seen in one of my previous things, my glue book is falling to pieces. So I needed to create a new one. So, oh, this is probably not going to fit into screen. I have just made myself a brand new collage book. That's the front. That's the back. Now the front is going to be collaged, it's going to be decorated up. We'll put it in the blue book and there's going to be a video of it. And then inside, as you can see, I've done it on rings so I can take the pages in and out. And these are the size of the pages. I've got A2 and I've, in, I've collaged the inside as well. So there's a whole video. Um, I'm hoping it's going to have been gone live by the time you see this one. But there's a whole video of me making that from scratch all the way back to the designing, what I used, the reasons I did it. That's about an hour's video, is it? Maybe, maybe about a 45 minute video when that's done. And then I think it's tomorrow I'm filming that same book that you've just seen and I'm gonna collage the entire cover and then I'll put Mod Podge over it to seal it. And then what I plan to do is there's gonna be a playlist then created. It's probably gonna be called um, 
art book glue book or something like that or art book creations or I don't know and then what I'll do is whenever I do a collage that's bigger than this planner I will do it in that book and then it will become a video and then what I'm going to do is when I do one of my YouTube lives I will take a page out of that and YouTube live it with you guys there I'm probably going to ask you guys okay what do you want on this page and if I've got it within this workshop I will then use it and we'll build it together and go with comments and everything like that. Um, and then that, that will just become the depository for anything I do collage wise. And because this is sort of A5 pages, so that's an A4 and that's an A2 or is it A3? I think that's A3, I can't remember. Anyway, it's twice as big as this. Turn it on side twice as big. So it gives me a bigger canvas. So I'm really looking forward to doing that. So anyway, let's get back to this, shall we? So, and that's a glue page that's got glue on it. So we know we've got some patches still, but we also know that we've got stamps. So I can put stamps over those. Um, I do think, however, I do want something over that because it's going to slightly kind of annoy me. Where did I put those pieces? Uh, let's see if I can just piece together a few scraps of, of um, rice paper to help myself out. That's another thing I really love about rice paper. Um, I'm using a glue stick here, but if you use collage medium, um, which is a lot wetter, um, I like the fact that it almost dissolves into each other, into itself. So if you've torn the edges like I tear instead of cut, you'll find that the edges will sort of just disappear. Right, let's play with these. So I like that color one. Oh, I've got a stamp stuck to me. What is this stamp? It's a little tiny. Oh, look. Hello, Canada. Um, it might be a cute one for down there. My hands are so sticky at this point. Right. I don't really want commercial ships. I want sailing ships. Um, kind of the right colour, so we'll keep that one for a second. Um, there are pink bits. So right. Okay, let's put this stamp down. Because I know what will happen, I won't stick it down. I'll pick it up after I finish filming and realise it's not slick down. And then not remember where I actually had it in the first place. Um, someone commented that they really liked my collection of um, butterfly postage stamps. I did answer your comment and I'll, I'll make it a public one as well for us. Um, I don't know where I got them. I, I don't know where I got them. I, I'm 99% sure that I must have got them. Um, either on Etsy and I think if you're hunting for stamps you just need to put postage stamps into Etsy um, and put a theme like butterflies, flowers, weeds, chips, whatever you want to put in um, and I think when I if I got them from eBay because I don't shop very often on eBay um, I tend to shop on Amazon all the time um, I would say that possibly I bought a job lot of stamps or I may have bought um, a couple of stamp albums in like their auction section. That that's that sort of sounds more like what I would do. Um, but it's been a while. I mean, I don't I don't know to be honest, guys, where I got them from. Um, I do think I want to put the little Canada one in. I think that's that's way cute. Hello, Canada. Um, actually, I think one of the comments I answered this morning was from someone in Ontario. There you go, Ontario, Canada, we're adding you in. I'm gonna link you right down there, there you go. Canada is now featured in this spread, and it looks like an albatross to me, but it could be a gannet, but I'm sure it's an albatross. Okay, do I need to add anything more? That's saying it needs something. I'm not sure it needs a stamp though, to be honest. I think it needs something, but I think we've done enough with the stamps. Do I feel we've done enough with the stamps? I don't mind that up there, actually. See, aren't I terrible? I say one thing and then immediately contradict myself and do something else instead. So, oh, and I've just stuck this to my glue page. That's very useful, Griffiths. There you go, that's stuck over there. I do feel this needs something, but I don't know what it needs, guys. Um, does it maybe just need a bit of this? Maybe just needs a little bit of this. Ooh, look how sticky my fingers are, they're stuck to everything. Right, we just stick this piece down and I think we're gonna call this collage spread done. 
a little bit longer than the normal videos I know but we've talked about other things and other things so there you go let's stick that in there Let's move that down. Okay, let's clear the decks, have a little look at it and see whether I've actually covered everything that's supposed to be on this one. Sorry about the shadow. I'll make sure it's not there when I take a better picture of this. So squares, definitely got squares on this page. There's no doubting there are squares here. Text or quote. We do have a quote. Um, we have a quote here um, and there's text on the page. Pen and pencil. Well, I've got a pencil up there writing the quote. Fish is good for the brain. And I've got fish. Funny that. Um, da, 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 something that, that represents summer. I think he represents summer because he's playing guitar in the sun on the beach. Um, and the rest, the beach is summer. Let's just say that, shall we? Oh, look, the arrow's pointing to the fish. That was unintentional. And we've got dictionary page in here that you can only just see. Um, I think we need to call that quits. I think we're done. I'm not sure what the next collage is. I'm going to try and film that tomorrow. As I said, I'm trying to get ahead with these. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully that's summer to you. It's kind of summer to me. I like the elements. It's, it's very busy. But sometimes busy is good. Maybe we'll try and do a more empty one next time. So if you want to do me a favour and follow me, like me, share me, turn on notifications, Take a look at my Etsy shop and favourite it. There's going to be a lot of new products coming into the Etsy shop. Digital downloads this year. And um, there's a whole line of videos listed for me to film. But as I said, when the builders are gone, it'll be full steam ahead. And I'll try and do maybe two a day. And then I can schedule them so that when workloads get large for me, it doesn't mean I'll still be supporting and sharing with you guys. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for the subscriptions. It's lovely to have you on this journey with me. So I'm Kerry the Crafter, C-E-R-I the Crafter, and it's goodbye from me until next time. Bye-bye now.